Well, three monks sat in deep meditation. And one stood up and said, I forgot my mat. So stepping into the water before him, he walked across to the other side to where their small hut was. When he returned, the second monk said, oh, gosh, I just forgot I haven't hung up my wet clothes to dry. He, too, strode calmly across the water to the other bank and returned in a few minutes the same way. The third monk watched them intently, figuring this was a test of his own skills. So he declared, Oh, so you think your abilities are superior to mine? Watch me. And he hurried to the edge of the riverbank and stepped into the water. And before he knew it, he was up to his waist in water. And he got out and he tried again. And he tried again. And he tried again. And every time he got soaked as he fell into the water. So... After watching his performance in silence, one of his fellow monks asked the other monk, do you suppose we should tell him where the stones are? <laughs> the practice of mindful walking, says Thich Nhat Hanh, is a profound, pleasurable way to deepen our connection with our body, with spirit, with the earth, we breathe and we take a step. And we come back to our true home, to our true selves. And then we breathe and we take another step. Many of us walk for the sole purpose of getting from one place to another, right? Now suppose that every time we walk, we walk as if we are in a sacred place and we walk gently and with reverence and with sacredness. You know, I, I propose that this week that you try the walking meditation techniques that I'm going to share with you today and that you practice. And so you can really begin to incorporate the way that you st step on the earth, wherever you are, into your daily practice. <clears throat> uh, Thich Nhat Hanh wrote, With each step, the earth heals. With each step, we heal the earth. In the Lotus Sutra, which dates back to the 5th century, uh, it's probably the oldest, one of the oldest Buddhist manuscripts, and it was discovered in India. And it represents the discourse um, delivered by the Buddha about his way of life. In the Lotus Sutra, the Buddha is described as being uh, the most respected creature that walked on two feet. He was so loved because he enjoyed a good walk. Besides, the car wasn't invented then. You know, walking is an essential part of the Buddhist meditation. It can be a profound spiritual practice. Now, I don't know about you, but I sometimes struggle with sitting down and in uh, sometimes an uncomfortable pose and trying to meditate. And my, my mind just goes choo, 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 all, all over the place. Any of you <laughs> experience the same thing? But what I found with walking meditation is that it gives me an activity to focus my body and my mind on so that I'm able to stay present in the moment with the walking meditation. Um, you know, the best way to practice walking meditation or to do it really is to practice it. You know, many of us don't walk with our feet. Um, the truth is we walk with our minds. Ever notice that we're always thinking about something, where we're going to go, what we've done, where we've been, and 
very few times do we really focus on what we are doing right now so we can be present, absolutely present in the moment. And this is mindfulness. Why are oftentimes while our body is walking one way, um, our mind is being taken in another direction. Would you all mind if we shut the door? So there's, there's a breeze. Okay. We've got lots of breeze in here, but this one is really interfering with my microphone. You know, for the Buddha, the mind and the body are two aspects of the same thing. And walking is as simple as putting one foot in front of the other. But often, for us, it's difficult and it's tedious because we really aren't paying attention to what we're doing. And oftentimes, instead of walking someplace, we drive because we are what? Lazy. <laughs> Kurt says lazy, but we're, we're also busy, so we think, right? And so we have to get things done as quickly as possible. And one of the beautiful things about walking meditation is it gives us the opportunity to really slow down, to to allow our feet to touch the earth mindfully. You know, when we walk mindfully, we, we step and we touch the earth in such a way that we establish ourselves in the moment. That's everything. That embraces all that we are, our body, mind, and our spirit in that moment to just be with that step. And all of a sudden, when we are so focused in that moment, we're free of all the to-dos that we have in our mind. And we can let all of that go and just take a respite from the, the complications and the challenges in life and just be present in the moment. So, you know, I like to think that our footstep is our signature. When we walk as if we are signing the earth, as if we're writing down the truth of who we are with every step and being so with it that it's almost like we're, we're, we're signing our commitment, our love, our presence to be in that moment. So when we step mindfully and think of our footprint as being a signature that we are signing the earth, that we are loving the earth, that we are connecting with the earth, that we're bringing our mind, our body, and our spirit into that moment to connect with Mother Earth. You can step like this because there is a Buddha in you. You have the Buddha nature in you. It is the truth of who you are. There's a Buddha in every one of us. And what I love about the Buddha tradition, you know, people, um, people don't worship the Buddha, right? Buddha never said, come here and worship me. In fact, I kind of got that wrong. Just like got the, most people got it wrong with Jesus as well. Jesus never said, worship me. He said, he said, do as I do. And the Buddha is saying, do as I do. And that's why we have these great statues of the Buddha in this meditative, meditative position because he's reminding us to sit and just be present. And the Buddha liked to walk. And that we know that the, the Buddha took each step with mindfulness. And many Buddhist teachers, like Thich Nhat Hanh, whom we're going to talk about more today, talk about walking like the Buddha. Walking not like that Buddha out there, but walking like the Buddha who is, that is who we are. In unity, we, call, we say that you know, we are the Christ. And for me, the Christ and the Buddha are the same thing. They're, they're two parallel um, 
uh, Buddhism doesn't like it to be called a religion, but it's a spiritual path uh, in the same way that I think that unity is a spiritual path and really not so much a religion. So we have this capacity within us to let this Buddha nature within ourselves to walk. On this beautiful path, I walk in peace. With each step, a gentle wind blows. With each step, a flower blooms. Thich Nhat Hanh wrote, even in the most difficult situation, you can walk like a Buddha. He says, last year I visited Korea and there was a moment when my group was surrounded by hundreds of people. Each of them had a camera and they were closing in around my group. There was hundreds of them. And he said, it was a very difficult situation. And I didn't know what to do. And so I said, dear Buddha, I give up. You walk for me. Right away, the Buddha came, Thich Nhat Hanh says. And he walked with complete freedom. And the crowd made room for the Buddha to walk. No effort was made. And he's saying, if, if we find ourselves in some difficult situation, and, it's, and, and we can say to ourselves, the Buddha, Buddha, I give up. You walk for me. In the same way we say in unity, it's the Christ within that does the work. So we can call on the Buddha, we can call on the Christ, but it is that nature of presence and love that's within all of us that we can call upon in any moment to be the way that we express ourselves in the world. Thich Nhat Hanh says, and right away the Buddha came and he walked with complete freedom and the crowd made room for the Buddha to walk. Step aside and allow the Buddha to walk as you. The Buddha is you. This works in all situations. I know I've tried it myself. And we say, as we say in unity, the Christ is in you. I behold the Christ in you. You know, it's kind of like, have you ever encountered a challenge with your computer? <laughs> Has anybody not had a challenge with their computer, right? And, and do you have somebody, a friend or relative that you can call on, you know, to help you with your computer? I know I've called on Mike Rodby. Hi, Mike. A few times. And, and, and Mike's like, oh, I can, you know, I can solve this. And he helps me to work through the challenge that I'm having. And it's the same way. Mike, you're the Christ. <laughs> we can call upon that Christ presence wherever we are to help us in any situation. We can say, I open up to the Christ within. I open up to the Buddha within. It's like in that moment, we access that higher intelligence, that spiritual intelligence that is the truth of who we are. And we all have access to that all the time. When we can be faced with challenges, and my, one of my favorite phrases is, it's not I, but the Christ within who does the work. I said that this morning before this service started. It's not I, but the Christ within that does the work. It's not I, but it's the Buddha within that does the work. We can allow the Christ within to walk with us. We can allow the Buddha to walk with us. And we can have the confidence of turning any situation in over to that higher power, the higher power within us that we're calling Buddha or we're calling Christ. 
Remember, of course, when we talk about Christ, we're not talking about Jesus. We're talking about the higher essence of truth that Jesus obtained that he said, you can do this also, right? In the same way, the Buddha said, you can be enlightened as well. When you are enlightened, you too are a Buddha. You know, we can walk for a blessing, and we can walk for a healing. I think that's one of the beautiful things that we can do with walking meditation as we can use it as a way to heal our world, as a way to heal our consciousness, and as a way to heal our, our thinking, our body, our mind, and our spirit. You know, it's nice to walk with our parents our, or our grandparents who may not have known the practice of um, walking meditation. And I believe that we can experience profound healing with our ancestors, with our relationship with our ancestors by calling upon them and walking with their essence, whether it is their, their spiritual essence or our thoughts about them, but we can have healing in our life when we call upon um, these essence. For example, we can say, Mother, would you like to walk with me? And we can walk with the essence of our mother. And I believe that if, if we have any unresolved, unhealed things with our mother, that we can call upon her essence, our thoughts of her, and heal these through walking meditation. And then as we walk, we behold that essence with love, to think of our mothers with love, and to just appreciate who our mothers were, what they brought, what they taught us, what they left us with. You know, I like to believe that there is a, the essence of my mother in me because my mother created me. It was part of what the creative process that brought me into this realm. And we can heal that essence and connect with that essence. In the same way, we can connect with our fathers and say, Dad, would you like to join me? Would you like to walk with me? Would you like to be with me? Let's share this moment in spirit together. To walk together. To be together. To love together. And even another part of this that is powerful is to walk with somebody that challenges us. Anyone have anyone who challenges them? What if you said to that person, would you walk with me? It'd be great if you could do it in person, but it may not always be possible. But you can call upon someone who is alive or is not alive and say, can you walk with me? Let us, let us be together. Let us step together. Let us be in this moment together. Let us love together. And what we're really healing is what? It's ourselves. It's about letting love flow, letting forgiveness flow, letting peace flow, letting ourselves be free of any distractions and to be totally present in the moment. You are a Buddha. You are a Bodhisattva. Because you desire to become awake. Walking in walking meditation allows us that Buddha nature to come out. It's kind of like a prayer, isn't it? To be filled with love. A Bodhisattva is a person who desires to be awake who desires to have spiritual connection, who desires to have 
peace in their life, who desires to be the presence of love and peace wherever we are. On this beautiful path, I walk in peace. With each step, a gentle wind blows. With each step, a flower blooms. During walking meditation, we walk slowly and in a relaxed way keeping a light smile on our face, on our lips. When we practice this way, we feel deeply at ease. Walking meditation is really to enjoy the walking, to be totally present to it. And we walk not to arrive someplace, but just to merely be, to be in the moment to enjoy each step, to shake off the worries and the anxieties and the thoughts and the concerns and just be present in the moment. And all of us can do it. It just takes a little bit of time. Are you starting to feel the desire to try it? (laughs) There's a little poem I'd like to share with you that Thich Nhat Hanh wrote. And um, in a moment, um, we're going to do a walking meditation, if you are interested uh, in doing so. And um, as part of that meditation, I'll leave this slide up so that you can reference it. And um, I think that we'll, we'll just say it to ourselves, but let's say it out loud to practice together. I have arrived. I am home in the here, in the now. I am solid. I am free. In the ultimate, I dwell. And as we say these words, we breathe. We relax into the essence of these words. So uh, in a moment, we'll do a walking meditation. And I'll invite you to to walk around the room and just be aware of social distancing and where you're going. And and we're going to walk slowly so no one should crash into each other. And let's just walk peacefully. So I invite you to stand up. So let's just just walk slowly on this beautiful path. I walk in peace. With each step, a gentle wind blows. With each step, a flower blooms. The infant Buddha is portrayed taking his first seven steps on earth, causing the lotus flower to appear with each of his footsteps. We should all cause a lotus flower to bloom with each one of our steps. The next time you practice walking meditation, try visualizing that a flower is rising up as you step and after you step. Like a newborn Buddha, don't feel unworthy of this vision. If your steps are serene, they are worthy of flowering. You are a Buddha, and so is everyone else. The Buddha himself said so. And he said, when he said, all beings have the potential for awakening. To practice walking meditation is to practice living in mindfulness. Mindfulness and enlightenment are one. Enlightenment leads 
to mindfulness. Mindfulness leads to enlightenment. On this beautiful path, I walk in peace. With each step, a gentle wind blows. With each step, a flower blooms. Thich Nhat Hanh wrote, Take my hand. We will walk. We will only walk. We will enjoy our walk without thinking of arriving anywhere. Walk peacefully. Walk happily. Our walk is a peaceful walk. Our walk is a happiness walk. Then we learn that there is only peace. The peace that is the walk. And there is the happiness walk. The walk that happens when we're happy. We walk for ourselves. We walk for everyone. Always hand in hand. Walk and touch peace every moment. Walk and touch happiness every moment. Each step brings a fresh breeze. Each step makes a flower bloom under our feet. Kiss the earth with your feet. Print on earth your love and happiness. Earth will be safe. When we feel it is enough safety in us. Think about what is it that is your dream for our planet? What is your dream? For humankind. What is your dream for you? What is that Christ nature, that Buddha nature within you want to contribute to humankind? You know, we're all one in consciousness. And what is it that this nature within you desires to express as? How does that look? What does that feel like? Maybe it's doing hula. Maybe it's singing. Maybe it's loving. Maybe it's being peaceful. So as you hold your gift today, I invite you to hold that, this desire of your Christedness, of your Bodhisattva. And let's behold our gifts moving out into the world in a way that's transforming this planet. So as we Hold our gifts. Let's uh, firm and a pray. Firm and a pray. Well, that's kind of cool. That's like an affirmation and a prayer all as one. So that's what this is. This is a pray. Uh, and let's say our uh, affirmation of prosperity together. Through a grateful, giving heart, my mind and life overflow with the abundance of God's all providing infinite supply. And so it is. Thank you, loving spirit, for these gifts that have come to us in love. We hold them. We bless them. We give thanks for them. And we know that they move through us and through this ministry out into the world. And we behold a world filled with love, with light, with peace, and with joy. And so it is. Amen. Did y'all write that number down? All right, let's all call him at the same time and see if that was really...
<laughs> so um, thank you all for being here today. Uh, thanks to Emily for being our videographer today. Alcantorna on sound for our uh, lovely hula ladies. And uh, all of you out in Facebook land, uh, we love you and bless you and appreciate you as well. And thank you for being a part of our ministry, um, wherever you are, on your couch. And I've been saying we're going to get a couch up here too, Kurt, don't you think? So we can, we can relax like everybody else, right? That just seems fair. Oh, and I was just, I was like, I wanted to get off the oh well. It's okay. Kurt was saying that he felt jealous uh, because we're all up and walking around doing a walking meditation, and he has to sit in the chair. Okay. I've seen a lot of musicians walking around yeah, right. with their instruments. You know, you might start a new trend: a walking guitar player meditation. Strolling. 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 Yes. I think I've seen you strolling before. <laughs> oh, yes. Strolling with the strings. Well, uh, let's see. If so, uh, There's a sign-up sheet on the back table. If you'd like to bring uh, some flowers on Sunday morning, you can sign up to do that. These flowers behind me, um, this is a lovely orchid that uh, Emily and I have had for over a month. And um, it's... Uh, sharing the last of its beauty with us because it seemed like they last a month or six weeks. So I am uh, really grateful for this beautiful orchid that has brought so much uh, love and joy to us, both at home and here at Unity on Maui. Let's see, what else do we have? Oh, yes, we have an opportunity. A few people have come to me recently and said, you know, I'd like to be a member of Unity on Maui. How can I do that? And I thought, well, it's pretty easy. I'll do a class in a few weeks, that, a two-hour class that we'll arrange a time for. And um, we'll either do it here or on Zoom. I'm not sure how that'll happen. And you might say, well, why would I want to become a member of Unity on Maui? And I think there's a lot of good reasons. I think that the, the first one is that I believe that someone's commitment to join Unity on Maui is really a commitment to their own spirit spiritual development, to their own spiritual awakening. It's really saying, you know what? I'm really committed to making a difference in my life. And Unity offers principles that we teach and learn that help us to find more joy and more love and peace. Um, and another reason is that we have such an amazing community. And this community is here to support people who are members of this church, anyone really, but especially people who make this commitment to join and become a member of Unity Church on Maui or Unity on Maui. And um, so if you're interested in uh, coming to this class, you can give me a call or actually once you email me, that's probably best. And my email is Blaine, uh, Blaine T, B-L-A-I-N-E, letter T, number two at gmail.com, blaint2 at gmail.com, and we'll arrange for a time to have a class that works for everybody. Next Sunday, my talk is titled, Argue for Your Limitations, and They Are Yours. <laughs> someone, uh, someone said this in our board meeting on Thursday, and I thought, wow, that's going to be a great title for a talk. And so that's what I'll be talking about next week. And uh, Richard Bach said that famously in uh, his book, Illusions. And um, it's like, whatever, you, whatever we say we can't do, guess what? <laughs> we'll be successful at not doing it. So this is really about changing our thinking um, and finding ways to be more present and centered and honest with ourselves and to limit our negative thinking so that we can discover the truth of who we are. And that'll be happening right here next week at 10 o'clock. And uh, so thank you for being here, and I'll see you all then. And if you enjoyed this service, there are many more like it out on our YouTube page, 
Unity Church of Maui's YouTube page. We've got hundreds of talks and a whole lot of music. So you can always connect with what we teach anytime, right, at home on your computer. So that being said, why don't we wrap it up, Kurt? You got anything else uh, to do or say today, my friend? Okay. So why don't we stand and let's pray and affirm our uh, prayer for protection together. Together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us wherever we are. God is. And so it is. God bless you, my friends. Mahalo. See you next week. Aloha. Where I